Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of The Sleep Revolution. Transforming Your Life One Night at a Time by Ariana Huffington. Have you had enough of feeling ill and tired? Today's fast-paced world often means that sleep suffers as a result. One of the best things we can do is to get a good night's rest. Ariana Huffington, the co-founder and editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post, is the author of The Sleep Revolution, a comprehensive guide to understanding why sleep is so important and how to get more of it. The Sleep Revolution, a book about the importance of a good night's sleep, is one of her most notable contributions to the field of health and wellness. It's not just about how we feel when we wake up that's important when it comes to a good night's sleep, according to Huffington. The quality of our work, our physical and mental well-being, and even our interpersonal relationships can all benefit from getting enough sleep. Even sleep deprivation isn't synonymous with effort. A lack of sleep has a negative impact on our work and productivity, and we must reframe it as essential to our success. This concise summary explains why we all need to be reminded to get more sleep and how technology and workaholism are to blame for our sleep deprivation. Even in our sex lives, we'll learn about the benefits of getting more sleep so that we can do better at everything from work, school, sports, and so on. In the final section, we'll learn how to improve our sleep quality and quantity by using a wake-up call. We can learn a lot about the importance of sleep in our health from books like Eat, Move, Sleep, and Why We Sleep. Everything in our lives is easier when we get 7 to 8 hours of sleep each night. Meditation, good eating habits, regular exercise and a greater ability to connect with others are just some of the benefits that come from these changes. The wake-up call came in the form of Ariana Huffington, who found herself lying in a pool of blood on the floor of her office. To illustrate the dangers of exhaustion and sleep deprivation, she tells this story. She was so worn out and exhausted that she fell asleep at her desk and woke up in a pool of blood breaking a cheekbone in the process. Her personal experience of sleep deprivation helped Huffington realize she wasn't the only one who felt that way. Many people confess that they don't get enough sleep, or that there aren't enough hours in the day, while on tour for her book Thrive. Many of us complain about how difficult it is to unwind, how difficult it is to fall asleep, and how difficult it is to stay asleep. In her previous book Thrive, Ariana Huffington redefined success and explored philosophical questions about leading a good life after her transformation from sleep deprivation to sleep evangelist. In her new book, The Sleep Revolution, she explores the concept of a good night's sleep and why people form bad habits around it. How much sleep are you getting on average? Even though many of us believe that seven hours of sleep per night is sufficient, sleep deprivation is extremely harmful. When we don't get enough sleep, our productivity suffers. More than 40% of Americans fall short of the recommended 7 hours of sleep per night, according to a new study. This five-word summation of the current global mood perfectly captures the zeitgeist when entered into Google as why am I? These are the kinds of questions we ask ourselves late at night, when we really should be sleeping. The Paradox of Technology While technology aids our understanding of sleep, it also frequently prevents us from getting enough of it ourselves. Despite the fact that we aren't getting enough sleep, we still enjoy discussing it. There are nearly 5,000 sleep apps in the Apple Store, 15 million Instagram photos tagged sleep, 14 million tagged sleepy, and 24 million tagged tired. Since the dawn of time, we have learned more about sleep than at any time in history. However, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get enough shut-eye. We can see what happens to us while we sleep thanks to advances in technology. However, technology is also to blame for our strained relationship to sleep. 70% of Americans either use their phone as a bedside lamp or sleep with their phone nearby, a new sleep study has found. Melatonin production is disrupted by blue light from electronic screens, which in turn disrupts sleep. And it isn't just the blue light that disturbs our sleep in a neurological way. It's difficult to fall asleep and stay asleep when we're constantly distracted by social media and news feeds. A good night's sleep isn't just a matter of technology. It is a matter of our collective belief that overwork and burnout are the price we must pay for success. There aren't enough hours in the day for us to do everything, so we look for ways to reduce our workloads. Sleep is a simple target for exploitation. People in the United States are sleep-deprived because of their workaholism. Overwork and exhaustion are seen as the price we must pay in order to achieve success, according to Huffington, who claims that there is a predominant cultural norm of sleep deprivation in our society. 
During the 10 years from 1990 to 2000, the American work week increased by a full week. People are working longer hours and taking fewer vacations as a trend. According to one study, 40% of Americans haven't taken a single vacation day in the past year. Sleep deprivation has reached epidemic proportions, and we now place a premium on our waking hours. We've been conditioned to believe that time is money, and this has affected how we view sleep. Lack of sleep is the ultimate time waster because it makes our waking hours far less fruitful and interesting. As a result, sleep deprivation can be deadly. It's time for a sleep revolution, according to Huffington. It's time to take back control of our sleep in our days. Sleeping while working. Here's why working from home or napping in a separate room isn't as ridiculous as it sounds. It's estimated by Huffington that sleep is worth $100 billion in the workplace. The more sleep you get, the more you will reap in the long term. As one of the wealthiest people on earth, Jeff Bezos pays close attention to his sleep habits. For him, eight hours of sleep a night is the minimum amount he needs to function at his best. An increasing number of offices are providing nap rooms for their workers so that they can catch up on lost shut-eye. Sleeping in the office, contrary to popular belief, is not a sign of laziness. They were met with skepticism at the New York offices of the Huffington Post. However, they are now one of the most important performance enhancers. Like the Huffington Post, other major corporations like Ben & Jerry's, Zappos, and Nike have adopted this strategy as well. In addition to providing enough natural light, businesses can encourage their employees to sleep better by installing large amounts of windows. Daylight has a calming effect on our body clocks, making it easier to fall asleep and stay asleep. In a University of Illinois study, windows were found to be crucial. Did you know that employees who work in offices without windows lose an average of 46 minutes of sleep each night because their bodies require daylight to maintain their circadian rhythms? Did you know this? Workers also benefit from a better night's sleep and reduce travel time if they are given the option to sleep in. It's even better, according to a study by Stanford University, because you can work from your home. Up to 13% more productive than those who only worked in the office were employees who were able to work at home. Children should be able to sleep in their own beds at night. This is like asking me at 4 in the morning to get up at 7 a.m., says Huffington. Bottom line, children perform better when their circadian rhythms are followed and when they have slept more hours. An examination of the impact of early school start times on children's health was conducted by Brown University in 1998. Children perform better if they start school later in the day so they don't miss out on sleep, according to the findings. North Tyneside High School even experimented with classes starting at 10 a.m. in a British high school. In addition to their already sluggish 8.50 a.m. start time their students were able to do better on tests as a result. When two people sleep together, they are more likely to stay together. However, it is more important for sex that both partners get a good night's sleep than for the relationship to be happy and fulfilled. You and your loved ones will reap the benefits of a good night's sleep. According to a 2014 study by the University of Hertfordshire, couples who sleep together and maintain body contact while asleep are happier. They reported that 86% of those who slept less than an inch apart reported being happy in their relationship. The most important thing is that both partners sleep well, especially when it comes to sex, so that they can enjoy their relationship to the fullest. Researchers found that women's sexual drive is directly linked to the amount of deep sleep they get each night. To increase your mojo by 14%, try getting an extra hour of restful sleep if you're having trouble with sexual energy. An athlete's edge is given by sleep. Professional athletes are paid to perform at the highest level, so they won't waste time on things that don't work. In terms of peak performance, getting enough sleep has been made crystal clear. In his late 40s, Tom Brady is arguably the greatest quarterback in the history of the game's game of football. Can you guess what time he goes to bed? 8.45 8.45 p.m. is the time. In order to avoid injury, Roger Federer insists on getting at least 11 to 12 hours of sleep each night. Tennis player rents two houses for himself and his young family when he competes in Wimbledon. The reason he does this, which may seem bizarre, is to ensure that he has uninterrupted sleep. When he's in the gym, LeBron James tries to get 12 hours of sleep a day. After learning why sleep is important, it's time to get some shut-eye. In order to get a better night's rest, Here are some tips. How to improve your night's sleep. In order to fall asleep and stay asleep, we need to flip switch and turn off the day, our electronic devices, and our internal chatter. A few options are available to us in this regard. Aim to turn off electronic devices at least 30 minutes before going to bed. 
This is best done an hour before going to sleep, but this may be too much for some people, so take it slow. Huffington also suggests that we get rid of our reliance on the alarm clock. The word alarm is defined as anxious awareness of danger, but did you know this? What if that's the way we want to start our days? We need to set a goal of going to bed earlier and waking ourselves up naturally every day in order to improve our sleep habits. Instead of a wake-up alarm, she recommends that we set one to help us get into a natural sleep-wake cycle. One of the most important things we can do to get a good night's sleep is to learn to shut down the night before, says Huffington. Our phones can serve as a reminder for us to turn off our gadgets and reconnect with our loved ones, before finally settling down to sleep. In order to get the best night's sleep, the temperature is also crucial. The ideal temperature for a restful night's sleep is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, getting more exercise and consuming less caffeine both contribute to a better night's sleep. This is our last cup of coffee for the day. The author Ariana Huffington is a proponent of meditation as a way to fall asleep. People who participated in a six-week mindfulness meditation class at Stanford University were found to fall asleep more quickly than those who did not participate. Participants in the course took an average of 15 minutes to fall asleep, whereas non-participants took an average of 33 minutes to fall asleep. My favorite sleep hack, according to our author, is breathing. When I'm having a hard time falling asleep, I like to count out a few slow breaths. The 478 method. Four counts, hold seven counts, and exhale with a whooshing sound through the mouth for eight counts of inhalation. An alternative is acupuncture, which can help us get some shut-eye. Insomnia is alleviated by acupuncture in 93% of studies. Lavender, for example, can be used as a remedy. A few drops of lavender oil on a pillow can improve your sleep. Although technology has the potential to overstimulate, it also has the potential to help us relax. Helpful tech gadgets like sleep monitors and artificial light that promotes sleep are useful. End of the story. Sleep deprivation needs to be reframed. It's time for a revolution in sleep. We should reclaim our love affair with sleep, according to Huffington's wish. She says, we need to reclaim our love affair with sleep, not just because sleep makes us better at our jobs, though there's that, and not just because it makes us healthier in every way, there is that, too, but also because of the unique way it allows us to connect with a deeper part of ourselves. Sleep allows us to let go of all of those things that define us when we're awake, such as work and family. One of sleep's lesser-known benefits, or miracles, really, is that it allows us to return from our night's journey with fresh eyes and a renewed spirit, able to step out of time and return to our daily lives with a renewed sense of purpose. Achieving and making things happen are two threads that run through our lives, but they actually reinforce each other. Even though they may seem at odds, they actually work together. After reading this book, I hope you'll be motivated to re-examine your relationship with sleep and join the sleep revolution, which aims to make a positive impact on both your life and the world at large. Do you have any ideas on how to sleep your way to a better life? Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.